Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, August 30. The Central Bank is reporting that the Jamaican economy continues to show signs of moderate recovery. GDP growth is estimated to have accelerated in the range of 1 to 2 percent in the June 2018 quarter, compared to just 0.1 percent growth at the same time last year. Bank of Jamaica Governor Brian Winter says this reflects improvement in net external demand, increases in investment, and some growth in private consumption. The bank is projecting a modest acceleration in real GDP growth over the next two years, though this is expected to remain below the BOJ's estimate of the economy's capacity or potential for growth. Real GDP growth is projected to expand at an average quarterly growth rate of one and a half to two and a half percent over the next eight quarters. Labor market conditions also continue to improve, with unemployment falling to 9.7 percent at April 2018, reflecting annual growth of 14,700 new jobs and a decline in the labor force. Jamaica's net international reserves are also healthy and balance of payments are projected to remain at sustainable levels. Meanwhile, the Bank of Jamaica is holding its policy interest rate unchanged at 2%. This is the rate offered on overnight placements with the bank. BOJ Governor Brian Winter says the decision was influenced by its updated assessment for inflation to continue rising towards the lower end of the 4-6% to target by the March 2019 quarter and subsequently approach the middle of that target range. Annual point-to-point -point inflation at June 2018 was 2.8% and rose to 3.2% at July. Mr. Winter says the decision to maintain the policy rate was also influenced by signs of a pickup in the rate of expansion in private sector credit. Credit extended by deposit-taking institutions to private sector businesses and individuals grew at an annual rate of 15.9% at June, at June 2018. That compares to 13.9% at March 2018 and 12.4% at June a year ago. Mr. Winter says the bank will closely monitor these credit conditions and make further cuts to the policy rate if required. In the meantime, he is insisting that the central bank is not manipulating the exchange rate in an effort to influence an increase in inflation back towards its target range of 4 to 6%. It would be to do the exact opposite of the explicitly stated objectives of the Be Fix It mechanism that was introduced in July 2017, last year, and it would violate the well-established commitment of the government to a flexible market-determined exchange rate. We have not been doing that. We are not now doing that, and we will not do that. Mr. Winter made the assertion on Wednesday during the BOJ's quarterly monetary policy report press briefing. Cabinet approval has been given to purchase land on the Nuttall Memorial Hospital property to relocate the Crossroads Tax Office. The land is worth $229 million and will accommodate other offices of the Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ. Information Minister Senator Ruel Reed gave the update during Wednesday's post-Cabinet press briefing. He also disclosed that Cabinet had approved the acquisition of nine acres of land at Morgan's Harbour. This has been done for the development of Port Royal by the Port Authority of Jamaica and the Urban Development Corporation. This will be undertaken by the National Land Agency utilizing the provisions of the Land Acquisition Act and community consultations have been ongoing in respect of this proposed development. As he gave updates on cabinet activities, Senator Reid also disclosed that preparations were advanced for the hosting of the first Caribbean International Bamboo Symposium. The November 27 to 28 event is to be staged at the Jamaica Conference Center. Cabinet has taken note that bamboo, one of the world's fastest growing plants and a rapidly renewing source of fiber, is recognized as a multiple purpose non-timber forest resource which is observed as supportive of value chains across the world. 
worth approximately $60 million per year. Mr. Reed says Jamaica, through its involvement with the International Network for Bamboo and Rattan, hopes to initiate a region-wide program on bamboo. The minister added that the island, through the conference, would be exploring bamboo packaging as an alternative to styrofoam. The first ever shipment of live lobsters from Jamaica to Shenzhen, China, left the island on Tuesday at the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay. The export of Jamaican aquatic products are being facilitated by a memorandum of understanding that was signed by then Fisheries Minister Carl Samuda and representatives from China last September. This shipment of 2,000 live lobsters was organized by Rainforest Seafood in collaboration with other licensed fishermen. Minister Audley Shaw says this new market will provide fishermen with two to three times more revenue per pound for lobster than they receive for only selling the tail. We have found a market in China where they want the lobsters live. Okay, they want, they want the, the market the lobsters live. So we get a chance now to, instead of shipping lobster tails, we get to ship the lobster alive. 24 Cuban educators have been recruited to teach at the primary, secondary and tertiary levels for the 2018-2019 academic year. They have joined 48 teachers who are currently serving within the education sector and are recruited under a cooperation agreement that was signed with the Cuban government in 1997. We are happy that we will have support in the areas of Spanish, mathematics, physics, chemistry, biochemistry, agriculture science, Spanish science, integrated science, physical education, and biology. The Education Ministry's Permanent Secretary was speaking at an orientation session for the new cohort of Cuban teachers on Tuesday. He said the ministry was particularly grateful that the program was helping to achieve the objectives outlined in its language policy. And finally, the National Water Commission, NWC, says there should not be any major water-related issues at next week's start of the school year. While about 20% of its water supply systems are being impacted by drought conditions, the NWC says a number of special measures have been put in place to reduce the impact on schools. Coming out of a meeting with the Education Ministry, it has been agreed that schools will be prioritized for water trucking where necessary. Institutions more likely to face disruption in their water supply have been identified and technical advice has been shared for necessary corrective measures. In the meantime, contact details have been exchanged for critical personnel at the local, regional and national levels and school authorities have been asked to ensure that appropriate water storage capacity is in place. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.